Okay, we are also going to take a look briefly at some examples of output. In other words, text output, how do you generate that? I'm not going to be talking a whole lot about this because it's very similar to just using printf, right? And, uh, you know, the output functions are pretty much the converse of the input functions. They are in some sense even simpler because there's not much you can do. You can just basically output data and it goes into a file, right? The interesting thing, of course, the primary difference over here is that I now open the file in write mode, w mode. Okay, there are a couple of important things that you need to keep in mind over here, right? First of all, let me go look at in the shell and I find that there is actually a file already here called testout.txt. And if I want to look at the file, I have two options. One is that I could go open it in the editor on the left hand side or I could use this command called cat, right? And what cat does is it basically concatenates, right, the file or outputs the file onto the standard output or onto the console. So when I look at test out the text, I see that it has a single line called hello world out here, right? Now let's see what happens when I, you know, go ahead and try to open the file and write something to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just open the file for writing, do nothing with it and close the file, okay? And if I was to go here and run this, I'll find that, you know, it just basically goes and says finished and nothing has come on the screen because there was no printf, nothing to be done out here, right? Now let's go look at testout.txt and what you might notice is that, you know, it basically showed nothing and what that actually means is that testout.txt now contains nothing, right? So what happened is I opened a file for writing and then I closed it. I did not write anything into it the file has that existed has effectively got deleted at this point. But why is the file even there? Because I have opened it for writing and closed it without putting anything into it. How do I know that there is nothing in it? Well, there is a ls command which you can run with ls minus l, right? And when I run ls minus l, let me just close this side, what I can find is that test out txt, the size of it basically shows zero bytes, right? So the zero over here indicates that testout.txt now does not contain anything. It does not contain even a single byte. It does not contain a new line. It does not contain any character at all, right? But it exists as a file. So it's perfectly possible to have an empty file. It's not very useful perhaps, but it's possible. And that's what has happened because we opened the file and then closed it without writing anything into it. Now, what happens if I do this, right? I just add one extra line saying f put c and capital H. Note the order, right? The file pointer comes after the character that needs to be written, right? Unlike in fscanf, for example, right? So when I run this, once again, it exits without really showing me anything because I don't have anything coming onto the screen out here. Now, if I was to run ls minus l, I can see that I have one single byte in testout.txt, okay? What is that byte? Let's try cat. And you will see over here in this corner that there is a capital H, right? And you'll also see that immediately after that is this, you know, tilde slash unit 10 and so on. Now, all of this starting with the tilde is just what's called the shell prompt. It is something which the Linux shell is printing out as some kind of an indicator to you about where you are. You can customize it. You can change that prompt in various ways. The important point over here is that came literally immediately after the H that we have over here, not, not a single space, not the next line. Why? Because when you try to cat or examine the contents of a file like this, which contains a single file, it just shows you exactly the contents. It doesn't add spaces after it. It doesn't sort of format it. It doesn't do anything else for you. It just shows you exactly what was contained in it, which was this one byte, okay? Now, what happens if I add a little bit more? I say F puts, right? And just say ELLO. And again, you know, the FP, the file pointer comes after the F puts. And when I run this, once again, you know, it runs, finishes, nothing comes on the screen. But when I go look at the file, I now see that testout.txt has five bytes in it. 
let's make sure we understand that the first byte came from the h and the second the next four bytes came from the string that was f puts over there okay now it's interesting that it shows five bytes basically what it means is even though this was a null terminated string which has a zero at the end of it the zero did not get written into the file the second thing is I would normally have thought maybe there's a new line character that comes over here and you know immediately puts it to the next line. No, there isn't. It has not put in a new line character because then the number of bytes over here would have been 6. Okay. So what exactly does testout.txt contain? If we look at it, it now shows this H-E-L-L-O. No spaces, no new line, nothing after that and the prompt immediately comes after it. So it literally contains only those 5 bytes. And now, of course, we can also give the formatted output, which is fprintf world. In this case, notice that the fp comes first, right? And what happens when I run this is that once again it runs. If I now look at the file, it shows 13 characters. Where are those 13 characters coming from? One from here, four from here, so that's five, six for the space, another five for uh, world, so that's 11. I have exclamation mark and that's 12 and then I have the backslash n which was put in by my fprintf, right? Not automatically, it is only because it was part of the string, the backslash n makes it 13 characters, which is why I see 13 bytes. And when I run the cat out here, now you can actually see that the backslash n also got printed. It actually pushed things onto the next line after that, okay? You can also, see what happens if, for example, I do uh, fprintf and I say std out and say if I run something like this, right, it actually prints the message testing std out now onto the console. And the interesting thing is, okay, what happens if I say testing std error, right? It seems to do exactly the same thing, right? The difference comes when I have both of these. If I run this, I actually get to see two messages, testing std out and testing std error, right, which looks like it's not really helping matters. The difference comes when I actually try to run this program, right, because I can, for example, run dot slash main. I can also do something called redirecting the output, where I say greater than, right, and I will say std out dot text. Now you will see that the message that came here is only testing std error. Where did the test, uh, testing std out go? It went into that file that we just created, std out.txt. Okay. So if I remove that and instead change this, so rather than giving greater than, I basically say two greater than. Two happens to be the special number reserved for the std error according to the shell, right? You don't need to worry too much about it. It's just sort of an illustration at this point. You don't really need to know what file handles are at this point, but it's useful, right? If you, especially if you're going to be spending any time with the Linux OS. But in any case, what happens is if I give two greater than, and let's say that I make it std error.txt, you could call it anything you want, right? You could call it std blah.txt also. It doesn't really care what the name is. Now you will see that the testing std out came onto the console. And when I look at the std blah.txt, that contains the thing std error. So what this means in other words is that I can actually take my output and my error and redirect them in different ways into different files if necessary, right? So that is basically why sometimes output and error are considered as two different standard files because sometimes you might want that the outputs are actually saved somewhere, but the error messages should still show up on the screen to show you that something is going wrong. 